Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. In a previous video, we investigated bright solitons. These are pulses where the combined effect of uh, anomalous dispersion and uh, sulfate modulation cancel out, causing a pulse with a very special shape to propagate down the fiber without changing at all. And if we boost the power beyond a certain level, we can even get sort of interesting oscillating behavior like we're seeing right here. So today we're going to discuss something a bit different, namely dark solitons. So if we take a look at the nonlinear Schrodinger equation right here and consider the case where beta 2 is positive, meaning we have normal dispersion instead of being negative, which is when we have normal dispersion. So when beta 2 is positive, what happens? Well, in that case, we know that red light is going to propagate faster than blue light. So in general, if you have a pulse like this, um, the normal dispersion is going to cause the front part to become more red and the back part to become more blue. And furthermore, it's going to cause red light to propagate faster, so generally this pulse will spread out. And that effect is only improved by sulfate modulation in this case because that, because that also makes the front part of the pulse red and the back part blue. So this one's going to spread out pretty quickly. But what if we sort of um, swap the two sides of the pulse around so to get a negative slope here first and then a positive slope afterwards? Well, in this case, this part of the pulse is still going to become more blue both because of positive group velocity dispersion and sulfate modulation. And this part here will also become more red. But now, remember that the blue light's going to propagate more slowly than the red light which means that sort of the power over here on the left hand side is gonna sort of trail backwards towards the other side and this light that's over here is gonna sort of shift forward and if we maybe choose the geometry of this dip in a very clever way we can ensure that every single segment of this pulse will receive as much power from the right as from the left and then the dip simply retains its shape as it propagates down the length of the fiber so is there a way we can actually create such a dip what's the mathematical function that describes its geometry if you go through all the calculations you actually find out that it has to be a um, pulse described by the hyperbolic tangent of time. So this creates one, what's called a dark soliton, that simply retains its shape. So let's actually investigate that in a bit more detail. So here I've created this function that provides us with a dark pulse. And then we can initialize a fiber as before and take a look at the actual shape of the pulse we've created here. And I'm also going to start the simulation right now. So we can see that we have a sort of continuous wave background with a dip in the middle. Okay, it's not completely a continuous wave, you can see it's actually cut off after a certain duration here. That's just to improve some numerical uh, stability. Um, but it doesn't really matter as long as the uh, duration right here where it's completely flat is much, much longer than the duration of the, the dip. So now that the simulation is almost finished, I think we should be able to plot the output. Let's see how that looks. Yes, and indeed you can see that the final pulse and the initial pulse have the exact same shape. And furthermore, come on, there we go. We can also see that this uh, dip is actually retaining its shape all the way throughout the uh, six kilometer fiber right here without actually changing at all. We should also get a 3D shape like so. You can see we just have a trench that retains its shape without either expanding or contracting. So in the video on bright solitons, we saw that increasing the peak power of the, um, of the soliton can actually cause this interesting oscillating breathing behavior I showed you in the beginning of this video here as well. So what do you think happens when we boost up the background power of this uh, dark soliton here so that the dip is in some sense even deeper than before. Now um, remember for the bright soliton we saw this kind of oscillating behavior so what do you think happens in this case here? Do you think we get some kind of breathing behavior as well? Maybe something completely really different? Maybe you can think about that for a few seconds while this simulation here runs. So I think it should take around 20 minutes, no, not 20 minutes of course, 20 seconds for it to complete. So it should be finished just about now. There we go. And now it should be plotting all the outputs here. So in this case, you can see that we have the final pulse being shaped like a sort of more narrow dip here with two extra side dips. And looking at a dB scale, we can see that we actually have a single dip at the beginning but that sort of splits into, into three different dips where two of them seem to just propagate away from the main dip indefinitely without actually having any kind of oscillation going on. And it's a bit more clear to see here on the 3D plot with the main trench and then these two side trenches. Okay, that's kind of novel, maybe a bit unexpected. So let's see what happens if we boost the power even further up to a value of n equal to 3 here. So once again, we can propagate the pulse down the fiber. Now, you notice that this is taking a lot longer than it did for the bright solitons. And for some reason, I've noticed that when doing these dark solitons, I need a much larger number of steps in order to do the simulation without any kind of numerical uh, inaccuracies or nonsense going on there. Not entirely sure what that happens, but this seems to be... Um, be necessary. So it should be finished now and we should be plotting the outputs here. And yes, you can see that the final pulse now just has 
now has both a, a main dip and two side dips, and they even seem to split off into additional side dips right here, which is kind of kind of interesting, I guess. And it's a bit hard to see those extra dips on this chart right here. It's actually a bit easier to see on the chart. Pulse here, and we can also see him slightly here. There's a little bit of dip here, and then the second dip here, and then the main dip right there. So anyway, this is just a quick uh, demonstration of what's called dark solitons. If you found it interesting, please feel free to like the video and check out the source code in the description. See you in the next one. Bye bye.